All right, so welcome to Wednesday night at Living Word Family Church. This is these final days ministries and our new logo here that Elijah made that we've already clapped for. Thank you again, Elijah. And uh, I'm Pastor Ryan Speakman, serving under my favorite pastor in the whole world, Pastor Maureen Collins. And welcome. Uh, we are going to have what tonight? Fun. Fun. And why? Because it's Wednesday. Because we always have fun. Because it's Wednesday, yes. Very good. <laughs> All right. So um, hopefully you guys remember where we left off or approximately where we are. We've been studying. We finally made it after seven years, right? Did I announce before the introduction or after? But tonight, again, this is our seven-year anniversary of our Wednesday night class. And after seven years, we finally made it to Revelation. A class about the end times. Who knew? Yeah, who knew? I think I, I think I've like wandered in there a couple of times, but we're going full bore. So I, I told a couple of you because a couple of you have come up and asked the very obvious question. So, so we're in Revelation now. So why are we starting in chapter twelve? I don't know. This is how I roll. Oh, by the way, Wednesday night. I think whatever I have is contagious because I was reading the Wednesday night announcement, and uh, it's uh, Jesse in there. And what he's teaching on is Ephesians chapter 5, I think. And tonight is verse 5. One verse for the whole night. Who does that sound like? Right. <laughs> but, but in the course of that, we get through a lot of other stuff, see a lot of other scriptures. So we have been studying. And the reason we're doing this is, is I ended up here because um, we're in this much, much broader topic, which is America in, in Bible prophecy, right? So, so right now, we're kind of exploring how um, how America shows up in the, in the actual story of the end time. So we've already seen the United States in the book of Daniel, chapter 11. Of course, not mentioned by name, but, but we studied that you know, pretty thoroughly. The Hebrew word in Daniel 11 is Ketim. Ships from Ketim will come and cause trouble for the Antichrist. That's the war of Armageddon. And, and we studied that out. And Ketim, at various times, would refer to very, you know, different empires, but always the global hegemon. So, so whether it was the Assyrians or the Greek Empire or the Roman Empire, and, and more broadly, it refers to the West. So, so if by extrapolation we assume, I think it's a safe assumption, that it's just describing whoever the global uh, hegemon is at the time that all these things take place, uh, that's who it's describing as invading Israel up in the north and then coming down to Jerusalem to, to confront the Antichrist. And you guys know for months and months I've been you know, developing this argument that it's us. I mean, who, who is the dominant world power today? Clearly, it's been true since World War II, the United States. So, so now we're actually looking at John's book, the book of Revelation, and, uh, and we're, we're, um, we're going to see it, you know, more clearly, you know, what, what happens in the story here. And Revelation chapter 12, it, it just, it's a very, very good place to see how the confrontation uh, develops. So Revelation chapter 12, again, um, this describes the entire, this one chapter, chapter 12, uh, Revelation chapters 11 and 12 are right in the middle of the book of Revelation, and these two chapters together constitute a, a kind of a mini chronology of the seven year great tribulation and the reign of the Antichrist. Um, and the reason we have this is that these two chapters, 11 and 12, focus on one topic in particular, which is, which is the core topic of the end time story, the seven year great tribulation, and that's what we call the abomination of desolation. desolation. That's when the Antichrist seats himself in the temple in Jerusalem and shows himself that he's God. So uh, Revelation chapter 11 describes the first half of that seven year period before that event happens. Uh, and it literally says 1,260 days. That's, that's three and a half years, the way it's counted in, in, in Bible prophecy. And then chapter 12, as we'll see, it, all, it repeats that number, uh, 1,260 days. So this is, this is where um, the, the Antichrist has shown his true colors, and now the global hegemon, us, uh, we come to our senses and we go to war against this guy. We'll, we'll see it develop, but um, just for fun, I mean, we're finally in Revelation. I'm having a great time. I mean, so what, once we get past this whole, you know, study that we're doing, American Prophecy, so 2027, mark your calendars, another dumb joke. Yes, sir, that would be jokes, because they're lame, I'm not going to pay attention. Um, but uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I decided, is start in Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. We're just going to go through Revelation. Yeah. I mean, if Jesse can do it in there, in Ephesians, right? <laughs> so, uh, but for now, we're doing this. So 
Um, so just, just a review. So we're focused at the moment on the first five verses of Revelation chapter 12 and kind of getting our feet wet, learning how prophecy works and how this book is written. It's very poetic. Uh, it's what's called apocalyptic literature. Uh, John uh, never just comes out and says, you know, boom, I'm talking about this. He, he describes things in a very elaborate, uh, almost, again, the word poetic, poetic way. And the reason for this, of course, is he doesn't just want to say, hey, you know, um, these people and this event happens and then this happens. Um, he wants to give us much, much deeper meaning. And I say John, but, but who, who gave us the book of Revelation? The Lord. I mean, it's Jesus himself, right? It's, it's God himself who, who gives us this book. So God wants us to get much, much deeper understanding of what's going on. So uh, the first five verses are just kind of setting up um, who, who is the focus, besides the Antichrist, who is the focus of this part of our story, the last half of the seven-year Great Tribulation, after the Antichrist rises to power, takes over the temple, shows us true colors, and it starts out with this, now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a garland of 12 stars. We figured out that is referring simply to, this is from a dream that Joseph had, right? Yeah. This is the nation of Israel, right? Uh, and then, and, and we've been cross-referencing a bunch of scripture to, to you know, prove all this out. Uh, verse two, then being with child, she cried out, who cried out Israel, cried out in labor and in pain to give birth. We cross reference to the book of Isaiah where it talks about Israel as a nation be having birth pains, uh, trying to bring into this world who? Moshiach, right? The Messiah, which we know is Jesus, right? Jesus Christ. And uh, that's who the child here is, as we kind of discover more in a couple verses here. Verse three, this is a so So what John gives us is just a little, uh, uh, very, very brief chronology of the, um, the birth of the nation of Israel and how it's its uh, fundamental purpose in this world is to bring forth the Messiah. And, and, and John's just telling the story, okay? And another sign appeared in heaven, behold a great fiery red dragon. Who is this? Saint. Very good, gold star for Cheryl. And, uh, and we'll see, John just comes right out and says it, that he's referring to Satan in a, in a few verses here. Uh, we haven't gotten there yet. Having seven heads and 10 horns and seven diadems on his head. So we, we talked about how there's a lot of different ways that, that this kind of stuff can be interpreted and it's all interesting and there's there's value to all of it probably. Um, I, I try to keep it simple because the way I teach is like complex enough, right? <laughs> so um, this represents total absolute political authority and military strength is essentially what, what that's uh, describing. And you know, we, we've gotten into, and I say we, I mean Christians, the body of Christ, especially in recent decades, uh, we've gotten into, this, this may have been going on for centuries, who knows, um, different theories about, well, the ten horns of these ten nations over here, and the seven heads represent these seven kings or whatever. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not prepared to, uh, personally, I'm not prepared to point to any particular organization or, or whatever. Just absolute authority, political, military strength. Okay? Keep it simple. Sorry to disappoint. You guys want to hear something more exciting like, it's OPEC, well we tried that. It's the EU, we tried that. You know, let's, let's just, you know, keep it simple. As simple as possible. Verse four, his tail drew a third of the stars of heaven. Whose tail? Satan. Satan, Satan that dragon, yeah. And uh, the stars of heaven, what does that refer to? The angels. The angels, another gold star for Cheryl. Cheryl's racking up all the gold stars you guys got on. Yeah, she usually gets a lot. <laughs> Sometimes. It just uh, depends if I remember everything. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're good. You got it. And threw them to the earth, and the dragon stood before the woman. We're going to come back and revisit this verse. I want to look at this more closely, but not yet. Uh, and the dragon stood before the woman who was ready to give birth to devour her child as soon as it was born. So, so the, uh, the translator here, this is the New King James Version, right, uh, decided to capitalize the word child. I, I agree with them on this interpretation. That's interpreting because there are no capital letters in the Hebrew no. language or the Greek language as we know. So that's an interpretation. And what, what is the translator suggesting by capitalizing the word child there? Christ. And I already said it a verse ago. Christ. Mm -hmm. Christ. Mm -hmm. Jesus. But that's referring to Jesus the Messiah and 100% uh, in agreement on that, okay? Um, because again, Isaiah, uh, I think it's chapter 14 if I remember correctly. No, it's not 14. It's, it's like, like 24 or something. 
Um, uh, you said actually, it was 26. Thank you. No, first coming, second coming, and 20. She gets five gold stars because she actually <laughs> keeps notes. So when I say something wrong, she can she can fix it. Thank you, Sharon. Excellent. So um, so uh, Isaiah chapter 26, the prophet uh, again literally uses the words birth pains to describe this this great uh, burden that Israel has to bring Messiah into this world, right? And so she's ready to give birth, but there's Satan uh, standing there ready to devour the child. What, what does that mean? To kill. He wanted to kill Jesus before he even had a chance to, to you know, start you know, walking and talking if he could. And how did he do that? See, Satan, we talked last week very briefly about this concept of physicality, that, that you know, um, there's a temptation sometimes to spiritualize everything, but, but, uh, but, but that's a mistake, okay? Uh, these things happen in the natural, uh, people are used, places are used, events. There was a specific person used as an agent to try to carry out uh, these words here, Herod. right? And who was that? Herod. King Herod, right? The, the, the wise men came from the east. Uh, he heard about it, they came before him. You know, he's asking them, you, you know, I know it's Bethlehem, but what, about when, when did this start here? Trying to figure out the dates, and then couldn't quite pinpoint it, so eh, just kill every baby up to two years old. Let's not, you know, take any chances, draw any punches. No big deal. You know, maybe maybe the star appeared a year before, but let's just pat it just to be on the safe side. Killing babies just to protect his own throne because he knew who they were going to see. The Messiah had been born. Just as Isaiah had prophesied, the Messiah had come into the world. Now, most of the Jews ended up not believing that, that Jesus was the Messiah. King Herod believed it because of the witness of the wise men who came from the east to, to see him, uh, he, they, apparently they impressed him enough that he would kill 27. a whole bunch of babies. Go ahead. So that's referring to when he drew the third of the stars from heaven. Is that when Satan was cast? Uh, that's what I want to come back to because this, is, this has been kind of driving me, yeah, you know, a few things do that for years trying to figure this out, but uh, we're gonna come back to that in a minute. Excellent question. You get a gold star just for asking that because that's what I wanna to know too. And, I'm, and I still don't have an answer. So what, what are the three words that you'll ever hear a preacher or teacher say, but that I like to say all the time? What I is was it? wrong. I don't know. You, you don't know what the three words are or you're saying those are the three words? I was wrong. <laughs> yes, exactly. I don't know. Keeps, keeps me humble, so. Uh, and then finally, we are in verse 5, and here's what we're looking at at the moment. Um, so we may not get back to that question tonight because I want to explore this, but it's a, it's a fascinating question, what, what Greg just asked. Uh, does that mean that, that that's when Satan fell from heaven? But we're, we're going to get to that next week, I think, because I've got a couple of uh, scriptures I want to hit before then because uh, we already took care of the first half of this verse. This is the final verse in our, in our first five verses of Revelation chapter 12, this little mini chronology that's setting up for us who is the subject besides the Antichrist of this story, Revelation chapter 12 and beyond. It's, it's the rest of the book of Revelation. Um, and so in these five verses, uh, John is telling us who it is that he's going to be talking about. And, and, uh, and he's, and again, very poetic to just get into you know, deeper meaning. But, but we looked at this last week, she bore a male child, that's Jesus, right? Israel is the she who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. So uh, we looked at um, uh, Psalms, right? What was it, Sharon? I can look at my notes, but she'll look at hers. <laughs> in Psalms where it talks about, uh, G wait, it wasn't even Psalms, was it? Uh, yeah, it was Psalm 2, verses 6 through 9, that um, he'll rule the nations with a rod of iron. And um, did that happen during his first coming? No. Of course not. That's why the Jews rejected him. Do you guys realize that? You know that. You've because seen he came as a lamb. I mean, yeah. Again, reference, reference back to Isaiah. He came as a lamb. Yeah, you know, if they just known their own scriptures, and Jesus chastised them for that, mm -hmm. didn't he? Mm -hmm. If you just knew your own scripture, you would know, mm -hmm. because when he came the first time, it was as a lamb. Mm -hmm. When he comes back the second time, no. which is probably the in our lion. lifetime, he's coming back as a lion, and that's when he will rule <coughs> with a yeah. rod of iron, prophesied in the Psalms, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and and um, and it even says he'll he'll uh, he'll break the nations into into pieces, okay? So we, I, t I ended with this last week, but, but it's such an important point. Millennial reign, we're not all sitting around just eating grapes, you know, enjoying life. Uh, it, the world will be, will be full of strife, 
conflict. It's not going to be a peaceful time. Uh, if it was, Jesus wouldn't have to rule with a rod of iron, right? Yeah. It will not be a peaceful time, which gets us to this last little piece of the puzzle here, this last little point. And her child was caught up to God and his throne. Okay, so let's, let's think about the first part. What do you suppose that's referring to? You see, it's not that hard. When Revelation rose. is not well, so... When he rose from the dead. Yeah, it's like, oh, I can't read Revelation. It's so <laughs> weird and mysterious. But look how easy it is. Once you get the hang of it. We're, we're in the rhythm here, how this, how this works. It's so easy. So uh, he, he uh, died on the cross. Three days later, rose from the, from the tomb. And how long was he on the earth? 40. In 31 physical form. years. Huh? 31 years. 40. No, I mean after the resurrection. After how much the resurrection, longer? Oh, it was, oh, three days. It was, it was uh, 40 days, right. exactly. In fact, right. I think it said that, says that in these uh, verses here. Um, and then at the end of that 40 days, uh, where was he meeting with his disciples? You guys Starbucks. remember? It wasn't Starbucks. It should have been. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> no. Five gold stars for, for John. Nine gold stars. Okay. What's that? Um, no, it actually was not the upper room. That's an excellent guess. I'll call it a guess. Where did he meet? Rephrase Very close. the question. He, he, he prepared them for the upper room. Um, it was it was on the Mount of Olives, right? Yes, so it was. so this is this yes, is his last day on earth in physical form, and now they're standing up on the Mount of Olives um, because when and we should know that kind of you know instinctively if we thought about it because when he comes back, where's he coming to? Mount of Olives to the exact same spot that he ascended from. So this is where we are now in this verse, and uh, and it says now when he has spoken these things, and actually I apologize, it's a few verses earlier where it says the forty days, but that's exactly right. Now, when he, Jesus, had spoken these things, and what things they, they you know, asked, he said, you know, go to Jerusalem, wait for the promise of the Father. That's the upper room. That actually took place eight days later on a Jewish holiday called... Pentecost. Pentecost. Uh, that's the Greek word for it, but that's exactly right. It's exactly right. The Hebrew word, the Jewish word is Shavuot, Shavuot. Is, the, is the holiday, okay? And uh, there's there's reasons for all that. I, I, that's going to be a rabbit trail that I'm very tempted to go down. Um, so, and then they said, "Is will you restore the kingdom of Israel at this time?" So standing there on the Mount of Olives, he's been on the earth for 40 days, and they're still expecting him to fulfill the entire prophecy about the Messiah and restore the kingdom. Which means now he's going to you know take on the you know the form of kind of an earthly king along the lines of King David. They're going to chase all the Romans out. And he said, no. He said, you know, uh, the times and seasons are for the Father only. It's not for you to know the times and seasons is the way that he, that he phrased it. And then, and then it says, now, when he had spoken these things, while they watched, he was taken up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. So they just watch. But in physical form, in his physical body, mm -hmm. go straight up into the air. Ascension. And like turkeys in a rainstorm, they're staring up right there. And, uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Finally, one of my dumb jokes gets a laugh. Thank you. Um, and 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 he disappears in the clouds, right? Mm -hmm. And while and while they looked steadfastly, come on, media shout. And while they looked steadfast, isn't this a lot faster though? This is so much better than. That means I have to go to the gym now, so I'm not getting my exercise. But mm -hmm. and while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, Jesus went up. Behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. And who were these guys? Angels. Angels. They were angels. Very good. Come on, baby. Who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will so come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. And this is what we're anticipating now. This is why we're in here. This is why That's right. we're in here on a Wednesday night. You know, we're not home watching TV. Amen. Because we're anticipating That's this right. event yeah. right. with right. great excitement. You know, week after week we come together. You guys all study this topic on your own. Right? This is why. Because... We, we're, we're born again, we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and there's, there's a natural excitement inside all of us. And a lot of Christians, you know, push that down, they, they focus on other things. Just my opinion, I'm not being prejudiced, I probably am being prejudiced. I think you guys are on the right track. I think your focus is where it should be. Um, not just this, because there's so much else to our salvation and the kingdom of God, and, and we live in the blessing, and we, and we believe that God loves us and, and heals us, and that he has a plan for us here and now. But ultimately, what burns in here, yeah, Jesus is coming back. Can't wait. Go ahead. Scripture also says, too, that um, he is a rewarder of those who long for his appearing. Right. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. Revelation says there's a special blessing for those that's who right. read and hear the words of this book. So, boy, we're just blessed all around, huh? <laughs> but we can't help ourselves because this burns in us. I, I, I know that it, it 
it, it tries to burn in every believer, but um, it's just, it's, it's a difficult topic. It can be scary, it can be challenging. Um, you know, uh, I, I wanna stay focused on the here and now, what's happening now, you know. Um, I, you hear people sometimes say, you know, you know are you pre-trib, post-trib? Oh, I'm pan-trib, it'll all pan out in the end. Um, but I know that no one here has that attitude, the way that I take it, which is, you know, who cares? We don't need to know. It's going to work out the way it's going to work out. Well, why does God put all this in Scripture then? He wants us to know. He wants us to be excited. So, anyways, get off my soapbox. Glad you're here. So, so, so we see that um, just as a, as as John says in Revelation chapter 12, verse five, that the child was caught up. So there's the catching up right there, um, and I love that phrase, caught up, because where else do we see that phrase? First Thessalonians chapter four, yep. right? Yeah. Verse seventeen. Then those of us who are alive. No, it's not verse seventeen. Is it sixteen? Then those of us who are alive and remain at seventeen shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Right. So just like Jesus was caught up, we're going to be caught up when He comes back. Those of us who are alive and remain at the time. Who plans to be alive and here on earth when Jesus comes back? Me. <laughs> well, that's God's say. thing if he wants you to stay alive. <laughs> I know it's, it's, it's God's plan. God <laughs> it's I'm God's, you, it's God's business, so he, he oh, keeps right. right. no, right. I'm just telling you, like, in here, that's, my, 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 that's yeah. my heart. That's my that's intention. Right. I, yeah, people think I'm nuts. I, I just tell them I'm not going to die. I'm not going to die. But you know, you figure this way, say. too. It says to live as Christ and die as gain. It's a win-win situation, yeah. whether yeah. we stay here or we're, yeah. we're with him. I know, but how cool will it be standing in Jerusalem looking at the battle of Armageddon and I mean better well, than like any movie on that but Netflix or anything that's going to get away. Right? <laughs> 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 you can write your book. I told you that's the right. story. Chickens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> or oops, I was wrong. You won't do this. Okay. So, yeah. so we see this a lot in that. Uh, oh, I had to uh, yeah. already pass the offering bucket. But I'll do it now. If you could pass that over to us. John, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. So I'm saving up again for you guys know what. You want to go that way with it, Cheryl? Should you start it? Sure. Sure, okay, John. And, and, and thank you guys, as always, for giving generously to the ministry. It, it, it does go to, uh, to actual things. So getting ready to publish part three of my book. Uh, well, I, did, go ahead. I know, very close. I'm getting close. Go ahead. I have a question. Back in Revelation chapter 10, verse 8, Mm -hmm. What did you do with that? Revelation chapter 10, verse 11? I don't even yeah. remember. What? Isn't that about the angel standing on the, sh no, the shoreline? No, 11 is, is, then he said to me, you must prophesy again about many people, nations, languages, and kings. That's where he ate the book. Oh, yeah, I haven't, I haven't addressed that in here yet. I did in my book. I don't, I don't remember. Because, you know, that's the same thing that that's one of the things that God gave me years ago was Ezekiel 3, mm -hmm. where he ate the book, and it went down sweet. His job was book, to share yeah. it to the Jews. Yeah. And, you know, and it's, it's sweet in his mouth, but bitter in his stomach. Yeah, and, and yeah. then, no, Ezekiel didn't get the bitter. The bitter showed up here in Revelation, and mm -hmm. I figured yeah. that that goes to, see, the one in Ezekiel was all about going to the Jews and warning them. And if he warned them, and they didn't take it, then the blow was on their hands. If right. he didn't warn them, the blow was on his hands. Oh, yeah. But if he warned them and they didn't do it, then they were all blessed. We'll, and we'll, here it says, we'll talk about that eventually, yeah. You know, took the scroll from his hands, the hand of the angel, and I ate it, and it was sweet in my mouth. But yeah. it made my stomach sour. I figured that was a revelation of the vision of seeing those who didn't accept it. Yeah, maybe, maybe and so. And the anguish. We'll, we'll, get to, we'll get to that at some point. I, you know what? i got to stay on track, though. i got five minutes, and I've got sorry, three, that three to scriptures to get so through. That's so. to as to who will be witnessing yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. That was my point of righteous. being all that. <laughs> okay. So, so we're, we're, it talk, we're talks in Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, about he'll be caught up, he'll be caught up to the yeah. throne of God, right? Yeah. So, uh, so we get the concept of a throne. And uh, we all know this, right? I mean, there's so many scriptures throughout uh, the New Testament, um, allusions to it throughout the, the Old Testament, that uh, Jesus will sit uh, at the Father's right hand. Here's one example, Ephesians ch uh, chapter 1, verse 20. This is, I could have pulled any of a couple dozen. I just, just This is the one I grabbed. Uh, this is Paul writing, which he worked in Christ, he in this case being the Father, right? 
when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. So, so uh, Jesus is caught up to the throne of God, the throne room of God. Mm -hmm. Now he sits on the throne uh, in the throne room of God. So, um, so is that for eternity? Yes. Jesus? Well, yeah. Oh, I need to say yes. Trick question. <laughs> <laughs> Trick question. Actually, um, so I'll be real bold. And as soon as I say it, you guys will be like, oh, yeah, of course. Um, no, it's not for eternity. Jesus, mm -hmm. Jesus is not because destined to sit. Uh, yes, exactly right. Yeah. He's not destined to spend well. eternity seated at the on the throne of the right hand. He could right. be both because he's Jesus. Yeah. Yes. But talking God about the, the physical Jesus and his physical body, I mean, he, he is yeah. he is the Father. So you don't get into the whole issue of the Trinity and all that. But um, but watch this. This is this is good stuff. So in Matthew, do you guys remember um, John and James? What was their nickname? Bo Boanerges, I have no idea Sons how to pronounce it. Sons of Thunder. And, uh, and, and their mom came to Jesus one day and said, hey, do you guys remember what, what their mother? Yeah. So she was, my boys up there. Yeah. she was a typical mom, yes. Can my boys Jewish sit up there with you? Yeah, Jewish mom. <laughs> yeah, Jewish mom. I know, I didn't want to say that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they, they'd be the first one to say that. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, can my sons, you know, sit, sit beside you on your right hand and your left hand? And, and uh, we're not going to take the time to look at that particular passage, but, but actually just a few verses before then, this is what prompted her to come yeah. and ask this. So she, she must have heard Jesus talking to his disciples. Uh, that was in Matthew chapter 20. This is uh, Matthew chapter 19, this verse here. And Jesus did say this to them. He did promise them. He says, it says, so Jesus said to them, surely I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, yeah. judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So it's not just Jesus who's sitting on the throne. I just want to develop the throne concept. You'll see why in a second. Uh, but, but even to the 12 disciples, he promised, uh, to those 12 mm -hmm. and how do we know that it's only 12 because there were a lot of people that were following him because it him says it. right there it says all sorts of right <laughs> gold stars all around <laughs> because it says right there 12 thrones go ahead Mark is that 12 half of the 24 elders mentioned what, what 24 elders are 24 elders mentioned in Revelation, in Revelation talks about the 24 does it elders. say that in Revelation yeah. oh come on I'm just, I'm just joking I've got that, I've got that password right here. <laughs> yes yes exactly Mark that's exactly right there. What's that? I think he named half of them right there. This is this is half of them precisely. Yeah. I agree with you 100% that in Revelation chapter 4, which is the ah, I'm not doing that on time. Me for me, which is um, where okay. So you, you guys remember the the little chronology of Revelation? If anyone didn't get that, uh, Tom had to remind me for like three weeks in a row to print them out. Um, I've got extras if anyone needs one, but a little one sheet piece of paper that's the world's. Uh, briefest, or how do I put it, simplest, simplest summary of the book of Revelation. Um, but in, in that little summary, uh, I describe Revelation chapter 1 is what, what we call salutations. It's just kind of like introducing the, the, you know, the topic, and Jesus is there, and we're going to give you this prophecy. Uh, chapters 2 and 3 are what? The seven letters to the seven churches. Okay. Chapter 4 now, now it starts to really get exciting. It, 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 it starts to get rolling in chapter 4. Uh, a voice that sounds like a trumpet yeah. says to John, he, he, he calls him and he says, come up here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're going to show you uh, things that are going to, to, to happen, mm -hmm. things that are going to come to pass. So, so John is caught up to heaven, to the throne room of God, to the very throne room of God. He just doesn't go to heaven. He goes right into the throne room. It's amazing. And from there, this is where he'll be shown the prophecy. And it's interesting as you go through Revelation, he kind of goes back and forth because later in Revelation, he's back on the earth. So, so they, they take him around to different places to, to show him this you know, vision. But, um, but this, is what, this is what John says. This is what John writes. So Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, after he's, he's, he's taken up into the, in, into the actual throne room of God. Can you imagine? Oh, how exciting. He's my favorite apostle. Don't tell the other ones. Right. He knows. <laughs> I mean, cool, it's like, wow. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Who was that? God. Jesus. Um, actually, that's a very good guess, but in this it's case, it's God. God. It's the Father. Yeah, God, the Father, mm -hmm. yeah. Because God has the main throne and the biggest yeah. throne. And See, this is where, um, that, could, that could offend someone, what I just said, because, well, Jesus and God are the same. You know, okay, but again, this, 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 
concept of physicality. I don't even know why I brought this up last week, but it keeps coming to me. Physicality. It's physical. It's physical. Yeah. Jesus has a physical body. He is God. He is the Father. But they are two separate, distinct personalities, yeah. and there are two separate thrones. Yeah. God the Father sits on one. Jesus sits on the other. And what, what it, however that pans out theologically, I can't comprehend it with my brain. Maybe you guys can. Maybe I'm single-minded. Is it? Have, they both have the same authority. Okay, but we have that same authority too. Yeah. But we're not God. Yeah, we're see, not see, God. See, see what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can of words, can of words. But, um, but, but in this case, yeah, Cheryl, greatness, but this is, this is describing the Father himself. Yeah. So John sees him, which shouldn't even be allowed, but it's John, he's filled with the Holy Spirit. Hey, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sargent stone yeah. in appearance. And this, this all is just uh, symbolically to just, just describe different uh, aspects of his character and, and, and his, his grandeur and who he is, his glory, okay? And there was a rain, and I get into detail about this in um, part one of my book series, I think. Yeah, part one. No, yeah, part one. And there was a rainbow around the throne, and rainbow, that's easy. Here, someone yelled out, what, what, what characteristic of God does the rainbow represent? Peace. Promise. Let's say mercy or promise, peace. You could say any of those, but, but we think of the rainbow that he put in the sky to promise that he wouldn't destroy the earth. With a flood. He didn't say he wouldn't destroy the earth again. Don't forget the little, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, in appearance like an emerald. And what did Mark say earlier? Here it is right here, exactly right. Gold star for Mark for uh, whenever you guys can predict what's coming up next in my, you know, <laughs> uh, you get five gold stars for that. I'm being generous tonight with the gold stars. Uh, and this is our last verse for the evening. And the throne, at, uh, I'm sorry, around the throne. Wait, is this our last verse? Yeah, it is. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads, which uh, signifies authority, right? Yes, sir. Okay, like, like Greg, you just said the spiritual authority thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mark, I think you're right. I think that Jesus made it clear. Uh, at least 12 of those thrones, we know who are sitting on those. It's the 12 disciples. And you might think, well, wait, wait, what about Judas Iscariot? He's sitting on one of those? No, he's not. He got disqualified. Barnabas was his replacement. Matthias. 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 In the book of Acts. Matthias. And it was Matthias. either Matthias. chapter 1 or chapter 2 where Matthias replaces. Because he's got to have 12. He's got to have 12. Yes, he does. You know, numerology, that's not from the occult. That's a very biblical concept. It's got to be 12. Uh, and that's to mirror um, that, okay, this is the, the representatives of the new covenant. Therefore, and it has to mirror what? Representatives well, of, go ahead, Elijah. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 yes. sons of Israel, yeah. Yes, I, I believe that 100%. Yeah, I do too. And, there, and there's actually further evidence of that throughout the book of Revelation. Yeah. One of them being, oh, by the way, I did actually forget, I apologize, I forgot one minor, minor point uh, from our previous verse. Got slightly sidetracked. Hold on. Um, because here's what I want to point out. When, when Jesus promised this, and we're almost done promise this to the disciples in Matthew. Notice how he words this, though. I do want to point this out. Assuredly, I say to you that where, when, he, he doesn't just say in general that they'll sit on thrones, but he says specifically, what does it say there? In the regeneration, what does that mean? You have a new this is, earth. This is just to cover this topic as thoroughly as we can. You have a new earth. Something made new. The regeneration, I think, is referring, I'm convinced of it, is referring to the resurrection. It's the regeneration. It's, and, and we can even look beyond into the new heaven, new earth, new Jerusalem. Yeah. But, but I believe this is a, a, a reference to the millennial kingdom, yeah. for starters. Yep. Okay? Yeah. But like we just saw in Revelation, so the, so the 12 disciples are promised thrones along with Jesus, who will have a really nice office in a high rise in Manhattan during the morning <laughs> rain, right? Yeah. Where's, where's it going to be? Well, no, Jerusalem. 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 He's going no. to be in Jerusalem. Yes. Where in Jerusalem? Mount no, Olives. No. Not the Mount of Olives. He comes back there. Where's yeah. the one? Where's the throne going to be? Come on, where's the throne? Going to be? And the Temple Mount. Yes. Temple Mount. Yes. Temple Mount. Not just the Temple Mount, but at the Al Aqsa Mosque. Yeah, yeah right. Wait. Yeah, right. <laughs> Soap in your mouth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the inner sanctuary where the Ark of the Covenant once sat of the, of the newly built yeah. third Jewish temple on the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Yeah. Um, 
probably in the Ark of the Covenant in some way, shape, or form, because that's what the Ark is, ultimately. That's why the lid is called the what? Mercy. The mercy seat. That's where that's where God came and met with the high priest. That's it's the it's the throne of God on earth. All right. That's where Jesus will sit. And in some capacity, way, shape, or form, there'll be there'll be these other thrones, uh, all twenty four thrones, twelve representatives of the new covenant and twelve representatives of the old covenant, which is super interesting. Uh, I'm only five minutes over. I'm doing great. Which is super interesting because. This gets to a critically important concept in the book of Revelation. When I say critically important, here's what I mean. If you get this wrong, you could get into what's called replacement theology. Yes. Christians yes. replace yes. the Heresy. Jews. The Jews don't matter. They rejected Christ. The new covenant replaced the old covenant, which it, it will ultimately, but even then it doesn't actually replace it. It's just that, that all of the members of the old covenant today will step into the new covenant. But you know, it was Jesus himself who came up with that terminology, new covenant. Today I give you a new covenant. Yes, you do. Um, I almost wish you'd used a different word. Sorry, Jesus. We'll talk later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some people have said. Some people have said a way to another way to translate that possibly is a renewed covenant. It's the same covenant, but it's just fully uh, manifested because because the covenant promises the Messiah. So so Jesus is saying, look, this is the covenant, and but it's you're fully. But you're going to because some people, and I've heard other pastors. Preachers say it too. When Jesus said I'm it is finished, yes, you here. are. Mm -hmm. When he talks about it is finished, okay, the Jews, it, the old covenant has not passed away, yeah. but not yet, not what yet. he did, it will. he fulfilled by mm -hmm. his death and resurrection. Mm -hmm. He fulfilled that, so there was no longer the need for the slaughtering of animals for sacrifice. Not, not at all. And this is why Paul, that's 100% right. And this is why Paul and Because he Romans, was the ultimate sacrifice. That's, right. that's why. Look, we offended Kurt. He's leaving. Yeah. Darn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, never. Yeah. Time. He's too tough. <laughs> Romans chapters 9, 10, 11. Paul, Paul goes into great detail that right now the Jews are in darkness, but it's only for a time, he says. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they, they don't understand what the, what the true, right. full, fully consolidated covenant is, but they will. And he says in, in Romans chapter 11, in the end, all Jews will be saved. But this is, this is a concept we're going to see throughout Revelation. We just saw it in the throne room, yeah. Revelation Chapter 4, where we don't just see the 12 thrones that Jesus promised to the 12 disciples, the representatives of the new covenant. We see 24 thrones yes. because it's the, what, it, what the word is, is duality. There's a duality yes. of Jews and Christians, and it's, it's a theme that runs throughout the entire book of Revelation to the very end. Even Revelation chapter 21, which describes the new heaven, new earth, and new Jerusalem. So it's not even a thing that's like for our time or for the millennial reign. It goes on into eternity. Mm -hmm. For some reason, ask God. But there's, it's a duality of Jews and Christians. Uh, got all of God's covenant people finally coming together, but still distinct. There's still a distinction for whatever reason. So we saw it in the throne room in Revelation chapter 4, uh, and we are seeing it in Revelation chapter 12, our current chapter, current part of our study, because what did we just see in those five verses? Uh, here's a woman. Israel, she has birth pains. It's her burden to bring into the to birth into the world the Messiah. Uh, she finally does. Satan is sitting there waiting, tries to kill him, can't do it. And that child finally grows up, fulfills his his earthly mission at that time, and and is caught up to the Father to the throne of God, where today he sits at the right hand of the Father. And what is John's point? It's that this part of the story, the entire story of the book of Revelation, is. Israel and the body of Christ, it's yeah. Jews and Christians. And we'll, we'll see more verbiage as we get deeper into Revelation chapter 12 that just really brings that home. It's, so are it's you saying stuff. the other half of those 24 elders could be Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, David? No, it's the 12 no. sons of Jacob. 12, uh, 12 so it's sons of Jacob, okay. 12, Yeah, so it's uh, okay. Reuben and Issachar and Asher. Yeah. And, okay, and, not Tali. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. exactly. Right. And, and okay. you know Joseph, and right. and it's mixed up a little Vanessa, bit. We'll, we'll talk yeah. about that some other time. But um, it gets yeah, it, like Dan is left out. We talked about that before. Anyways, okay. Now ten minutes over, so I got to close right there. Everybody doing good? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, now when we come together next week, remember we, we are meeting next week, not the week after. In two weeks is family fun. Come back next week because I'm gonna get to Greg's question, which was excellent. Which is, it, was that the moment that 
Satan was cast out of heaven. Why did we why did we see that right in the middle of that chronology, the story of Israel and getting, getting this assignment to bring the Messiah and then finally bringing the Messiah right in the middle of that and Satan, you know, the dragon because gathered he still has a, access a third of the stars and turned to the earth? Weird. If you stop and think about it, it's weird. Next week, we're going to stop and think okay. about it. You'll love it. Okay, so come back. All right, so let's close. Father God, we just thank you for tonight, Lord. We just thank you for your Holy Spirit and the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, the gift of your Word. Father, I thank you that each one here is filled to overflowing with the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, just fill us like we've never been filled before. Just increase anointing. Just anoint us to, to, uh, to prosper and increase and for love and joy and peace. And to understand these things, we just thank you for, for unfolding understanding and revelation. The more we, we knock, the more these, the, these things are answered. The, 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 digger, the, the deeper we dig, the, the more we discover this treasure that, that, that's, that's, uh, that's prophecy, that's, that's your word. Father God, um, Holy Spirit, I just thank you for each one here that you've given them a, a, a heart to understand these things and seek these things out. That you've called each one in this room to be a watchman in this generation. And I just thank you for increased boldness and courage to seek understanding and proclaim the truth about these things as you reveal it to us. I also thank you for humility in this room, that, that every one of us is teachable. Uh, none of us here imagines for a second that we understand every detail of this, but we thank you that you're revealing it to us together, that together uh, uh, the lights come on, Father God. I just thank you for the giftings in each one here, Father. And Lord, tonight just bless each one as they go. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And it's a good thing I do think because I just remembered I have to get up at four in the morning to drive to Disneyland. So oh, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. So hey, don't forget to clap. Let's right. hear the claps so I can yeah. get home and try to get some And come back next week. So, uh,